In the previous lesson, we talked about the concrete vector space. The concrete vector space contains the members of different concrete. And below these concretes, the family can be further narrowed down. For example, the red concrete with different grades. You have 10%, 20%, 30% depends on the ratio of gravel, cement, water, and sand. And these group of red concretes, they can form their own red concrete vector space, which at the same time is a subspace of a concrete vector space. Basically, a subspace is a smaller vector space where at the same time the members are the members for the larger vector space so the question here is for you to ponder is are the members of a subspace an object of the vector space now let's look at the red concrete subspace which has a member of 10 percent red concrete 20 percent red concrete 30 percent red concrete where all the members here can be formed from the water gravel cement and sand all the members under the red concrete subspace can be generated from four fundamental components water gravel cement and sand so these four fundamental components can also produce the concrete under the concrete vector space in addition these four fundamental components are independent from each other so just try to think about it can you obtain water by combining gravel cement and sand or vice versa any of the components here from the combinations of the other three so this is what is about the independent from each other. In the previous lesson, we said that the objects must satisfy all the 10 axioms in order for them to be a vector space. Here, the objects in the subspace are also the members of the larger vector space. So somehow we can say that the subspace inherits some of the properties from the larger vector space. So in order to prove that this smaller group of objects whether they are a vector space or known as a subspace of the larger vector space or not you only need to prove two axioms the first axiom which is about vector addition and the sixth axiom which is about the scalar multiplication so assume that w is a subspace of a vector space v and we have to prove that the w is a subspace by using these two axioms graphically Let's imagine that S is the concrete. The three-dimensional space here is the concrete, while W is the red concrete, which means that the W is a smaller group of members here, represented by the line. So this line is a member of the three space because this line is within the three-dimensional space. And the U and V, let U and V be the water, sand, the gravel, and cement, the fundamental components of the objects here. So addition of U and V will create a new vector, which is still along the W vector space. So let's imagine that you have a ratio of maybe one portion of water, two portion of gravel, and so on for the cement and sand. You get a new member, red concrete 10%, which is still along this red concrete family line. Or any scalar multiplications, you multiply it with the water or sand or gravel and cement and then you mix it with the different components here you still end up with a red concrete just with a different grades and properties but they are still belongs to the family of red concrete which is still on this red concrete line so the subspace of that can be formed from the fundamental vector based on the explanation here so try to think about it. Any other vectors along W can be obtained by applying it with a scalar. Similarly, the various grades of red concrete, the members of red concrete subspace under concrete vector space, can be formed by the four fundamental components here, water, gravel, sand, and cement. From here, we say that the objects in any vector space can be formed from the fundamental components. This is related to linear combinations. So let's consider this example. You have been given the vectors u and v in a three-dimensional space. Show that w is an unknown object, is a linear combination of u and v, and that w prime is not a linear combination of u and v. Basically, you have to prove that w can be obtained by the combinations of u and v, and w prime could not be obtained from u and v. So we try with the first proving first. We say that W is formed from the scalar multiplications of U and V 
and the sum if out. So you have to prove that this equation is valid, which means that you should get a consistent solution. So you substitute everything into these equations and you actually end up with a system of linear equations where you match the entry by entry. So the first component here with the first component here, second with the second and third with the third, and you end up with a system of linear equations. This is actually, this is actually very similar to your system of linear equations that you have learned in the chapter one. So what does it mean by the solution of this system of linear equations? where you have one solution, infinitely many solution, and no solution, as well as consistent versus the inconsistent. You, if you have watched the previous video, then you know for this equation to be valid or exist, you should get a one solution for this system of linear equations. So you put them into the augmented metric forms and then you reduce them to the row action form and you will end up with the values for the k1 and k2 is negative 3 and 2. So you can prove that w can be produced or generated from the combinations of u and v with the ratio of negative 3 of u and 2 of v. So we prove that this w is a linear combination of u and v, the two fundamental components in this case. For the second case, the w prime basically repeated the same procedures where you substitute everything into this equation and you match them side by component by component, the first component with the second component and you end up with a system of linear equations which I omitted in this case, you can try it on your own. So you have a system of linear equations and you should try to solve it but definitely you end up with the solutions where the system is inconsistent. So how do you know that it is inconsistent? And what does it mean by inconsistent system? Try to link it with the lessons that you have learned in the previous lessons about the consistent and inconsistent solution for any system of linear equations. In this case, you will find out that no such k1 and k2 exist because the system of linear equations is inconsistent. You wouldn't be able to find the values for k1 and k2 and we say that w1 could not be expressed in the form of u and v and thus it is not a linear combination of u and v.